All right, let's bring in now Klaus Lars, a professor of history and international affairs at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Good to have you on the program, Professor. Hello. Hi there. So, the big question we really need to figure out at this point, how likely and how close do you think Russia is to actually invading Ukraine at this point? Well, we don't know. You know, that is uh, the difficult position we are all in. We are speculating that uh, the Russians might be uh, interested in doing that, that Russia himself, itself and Putin have always denied that they have the intention to in Ukraine. Ukrainian experts have said they are two to three weeks away from invading Ukraine. But we don't know whether that is correct. We don't know whether it will be a full invasion, a partial invasion, or what sort of activities the Russians will embark on. But NATO has clearly decided that it's getting too close for comfort and that they wish to be more uh, reactive uh, uh, towards Russia and make sure that Putin has second thoughts about in Invading. So far, uh, NATO and the United States in particular have always uh, threatened new severe sanctions if Putin did anything stupid regarding Ukraine. Now they have ratcheted up the, uh, the pressure and have said troops will be deployed in NATO states near Ukraine. The Baltic states, uh, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, uh, and that is of course an increasing uh, uh, way of putting pressure on Putin. Right. And, um, you know, Russia has been calling this sort of redeployment of troops an escalation of a sort. Uh, but, you know, after two weeks of diplomacy, are we in a better position or worse position? Well, we don't really seem that much in a, a better position. The dialogue should continue. Both sides have agreed on that, kind of grudgingly. So it is good that both sides will continue talking to each other. At the same time, the Russians seem to be increasing their troop strengths uh, along the Ukrainian border. They are doing maneuvers in Belarus. They are embarking on pretty uh, Im impressive naval maneuvers, even off the Irish coast. They want to have naval maneuvers which is really, you know, very far from Ukraine and doesn't make sense at all. And at the same time, NATO has decided that they need to ratchet up the pressure. So both sides are talking and they are also escalating the crisis. It's not a good situation to be in at all. So far, the West and the United States have not said that they will actually deploy troops to Ukraine itself. So far, NATO has always said they will not put... Uh, uh, troops into Ukraine. And Ukraine is, of course, not a NATO member. But I reckon the next step up to really uh, tell Putin that he should not invade, that it will have very uh, severe consequences, that might well be the commitment to put at least a number of troops into Ukraine. We are not quite there yet, but but if the crisis continues, I can imagine that that may be the case. And this is not a good idea to increase, increase troop strength on both sides, the Russian side and the NATO side, is not a good idea. This is escalating tension and we may end up in a war by default. It is escalating. And, you know, between sort of you know, first the threats of sanctions and now the troop buildup, uh, but all of that combined, how much really are they a deterrent? for Russia? That is very difficult to say. You know, um, NATO obviously hopes that the troop uh, uh, st the, 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 or the greater commitment of troops to other NATO states like the Baltic states will give uh, Putin second thoughts. After all, what Putin wants to achieve with the Ukraine crisis by uh, you know, amassing 100,000 troops along the, tro uh, the, the, the border with Ukraine is really to prevent NATO from uh, be becoming stronger, to make NATO withdraw from Ukraine and other countries which Russia sees as its sphere of, in uh, of, of influence. Instead, what he seems to achieve is that NATO commits more troops, more NATO troops, to the Baltic states, to Romania, to uh, Bulgaria and other states. So he actually is achieving the opposite what his ultimate objective is. And that is meant to tell uh, Putin that he, what he is doing is very counterproductive. He's arming himself. He should really stop now. Whether Putin will come to that conclusion, of course, is everyone's guess. 
And Professor, we just have a time for a very quick question at the end. You know, the UK has accused the Kremlin of plans to install a, a pro-Moscow figure to lead Ukraine's government. Uh, plausible? I mean, especially in the context of Russia trying to widen, if not re-establish its sphere of influence. It is not impossible. However, the UK government hasn't provided any evidence whatsoever. They have given us some names, mostly four names, all former Ukrainian politicians with pro-Russian leanings. They probably, or most of them, live in Russia today. Whether there is any truth to that, we don't know. There has been speculation in some British papers that it is actually a convenient way for Boris Johnson to deflect from his own domestic uh, problems in the UK and use the international crisis around Ukraine to bolster his standing in the British public and to deflect from uh, his own domestic problems. I wouldn't put it beyond Johnson if that that was the case. On the other hand, you know, it is quite likely that Russia is trying to find more pro-Russian politicians in Ukraine to bring the country back into a, a more pro-Russian leaning way as it was before 2014. Uh, so both, you know, the possibility that the British, uh, uh, what they said is correct, is there, but we don't know for sure. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Professor Klaus Lars. Western diplomat.